Creating animations using brushes and texture can really put your work on another level, but we might not always have the time or the knowledge to do so in Photoshop. Hey everyone, my name is Erin Bradley. I am a motion designer at a studio called Dash in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm also a teaching assistant for School of Motion. Today I'm going to take everyone through just a few of my favorite little tips and tricks to take my After Effects animations and give them a little more of a hand-drawn organic quality. We're going to be doing everything just in After Effects. We're not going to need any scripts or plugins. In this video, you'll learn to create a hand-drawn look using native After Effects tools, imitate Photoshop brush textures using the rough and edges effect, create a flickering noise texture with fractal noise, and simulate a hand-drawn animation style with posterized time. Before we begin, be sure to download the project files in the link below so you can follow along. So I'm going to be using an animation that I actually made a little while ago. It's just a fun little plant pot loop. You can download my project file if you really just want to follow along with me. I also would encourage you to maybe use something that you've already made. It can be old, it can be really simple, but we're really just going to be applying these effects and not actually doing any animation. So the first thing that we're going to do is add rough and edges to all of our shapes in here to give the illusion that maybe it was drawn with a Photoshop brush rather than being a vector shape that we made in After Effects. So just gonna dive into my first pre-comp and setup in here is pretty simple. I have my pot, the squiggle right here. Let me turn on the path so you can see. The squiggle, this circle at the top, this little shadow line right here and then my leaves and they are all have alpha mats just to keep them in place. Cool, so first we're gonna select my pot and I'm actually gonna turn this back off so we can make sure we see those edges and gonna go into effects up here and find roughen edges and apply that. If you haven't used this before, pretty self-explanatory what roughen edges does. It has created rough edges on this shape and this isn't exactly the look I want, so we're going to play a little bit with the parameters here. There's so many different things you can do with this effect. It's awesome. I really suggest just playing with it as much as you can, seeing what happens when you just move everything around. But mostly right now, we're going to look at the border and the scale are usually what I play with the most. So right now, it's 100 scale, pretty big, which is why these bumps are pretty large. I want them to look really small, like maybe it was drawn with like a rough pencil. So I'm gonna move that, I'm gonna put it at like 10. Really see super roughness. This is a little too rough for me maybe. I'm going to get this border here and move this down as well. I'm gonna put it at three. That's looking pretty good. It still feels like it might be a little blurry. So one more thing that I might work with is the edge sharpness. And I'm gonna make that three. Cool. These are kind of my lucky numbers that I tend to go with. But again, play with this as much as you can. Like if I crank this border up, that's pretty crazy. And we're going to use something like that for another part of this tutorial. But so much you can do with it. But these kind of the 3310 seems to be what I work with a lot. So it looks pretty good. You could, you know, say create an adjustment layer. Or first, I'm going to turn it off on what I just did on the pot. If I made an adjustment layer and just threw rough and edges on there, sure, it might work, but you don't have that individual control over each of your layers. And especially when you have something that is just strokes, it's gonna need to be adjusted. So I don't necessarily suggest doing that. Um, maybe it will work for your project, but I like to personally go in on each individual layer and add it and adjust it as needed. All right, so back to the pot, turn that rough and edges on, looks good. I'm just gonna copy this since I like those settings. And right above it, I have this little squiggle line here um, that's just parented to my pot, just a little accent. And I'm going to paste rough and edges. So I actually like how this works with this stroke. So I could adjust the border to make it even smaller there. It's a little too small. Two could work, but I think I'm gonna stick with 
just the exact same settings I had there. So nice rough edge. And that really is starting to look like you could have drawn that in Photoshop, maybe with like a graphite pencil type brush. And just gonna keep moving up. So the next thing I have right here is this little line, just a nice little accent. And I'm gonna paste it there, maybe a little small. So maybe I'll move the border for this one to two and barely makes a difference, but it just makes it a little more visible. See if the border was like five, we're barely seeing that there. So this kind of thinner it is, the smaller you probably wanna have the border just to make sure it stays visible. And then moving up, I'm going to apply it as well to the circle and that matches up really nicely. Cool, so our pot has those nice edges. And now I'm gonna go into my leaves. I have two different pre-comp leaves here and they're each duplicated. So there's really only two different ones I have to go into. So I'm gonna jump into this leaf 102 first. So in here I have the stem and then I have the leaf. So I know this is gonna work on the leaf cause it's very similar shapes to my other ones. And then the stem, let's see, I might wanna make that stem a little bit different. Let's try two. Yeah, so I'm gonna have the stem just at two on the border instead of three. Again, just to make sure it stays thick enough that it's visible. All right, back to the plant. And then my other plant pre-comp over here. Same thing, my leaf paste looks good. And my stem looks good. The stem again, just gonna make that two. And back to my plant. And there we go, nice rough edges for this guy. So what I wanna do now is create a rough kind of noisy shadow um, for my pot and probably also for my leaves. Uh, something that maybe would look like I use like a noise or spotter brush in Photoshop. And there's so many different ways to do this, I'm sure, but this is just a technique that I like to use because I feel like I have a lot of control over it if I wanna make any changes. So what I'm gonna do is first just make a circle. Let's get my ellipse, hold shift to make sure it's nice and even. And I don't need a gradient, so I'm gonna just option click up on the fill to bring it to regular fill. Okay, I imagine that I'd want kind of my shadow to be around right here, and it's gonna kind of, you know, fan out, fade out over there. So I'm gonna put that about there. And I'm also gonna name this layer shadow. Just try to stay nice and organized. And I'm gonna move it down to right above um, the squiggle here. And I'm also going to track mat this. So that way it is only gonna show up on any layers that are below it. Also, I'm gonna grab this layer and then just make a um, little bit darker shade that I want for my shadow. That looks pretty good. Okay, and we are back with rough and edges again. I'm gonna turn off that so you can see it. Okay, obviously this is not looking what we want to just yet. So here's where we're gonna play with these parameters a little bit more. Kind of like I showed before, I'm gonna really amp up the border so it starts to kind of get that look there. I'm actually gonna go pretty crazy. I think I'm gonna do like 400. And there, obviously, we can't really see anything. That's because the scale's too big. Scale here, I'm gonna try maybe 20. See, so you can start to see how we're getting that kind of like noise brush type of look. I'm gonna make the scale maybe 10. There we go, that's starting to get super noisy. Um, looking at up here, I'm gonna turn it down a little. And I'm actually gonna um, put this on multiply. Cool, I'm gonna up the complexity a little bit. See, to 10. So kind of see what that looks like again. If it was at like two, just a little more, a little less blurry. Again, small changes. All right, and edge sharpness. I don't know about like two. Yeah, I think that looks good. Complexity down to like six again. Obviously you can see we have this issue where it's there's a little bit of a sharp edge right there that we don't want. So what I like to do to fix that is throw on a blur. Use Gaussian blur. And key here is we wanna blur before 
the rough and edge. So scoot that up there. And I'm gonna put it on like 20. Yeah, you can see it just helps to start kind of fade that edge out. I'm gonna put it on like 60. So we really get some little pieces out here, really fades it out up there. So this is definitely looking good. If I turn it down a little bit. So that's gonna be like really heavy. Not quite what I want. Maybe like 360. I'm also, I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. A little bit bigger, like 125. Cool, so that's starting to look like what I want. So I'm also gonna turn the opacity maybe to like 50. Yeah, that's looking better. And I put on multiply so it goes over top of our squiggle here and changes that color a bit so it's not exactly the same color as the background. Just darkens it up a little bit. Looking good. So that's kind of what I had in my head and it's working. Um, one thing I just want to make sure I do is I'm going to parent the shadow to my pot since that's what the animation is. So now when it's kind of squashing and stretching, it's going to follow it. I think I'm also going to add a little bit of a highlight here, just like something really light kind of up in this area, just because it feels like there's a lot of texture in this region now and this part's kind of so empty. So I'm just going to duplicate the shadow and rename it highlight. To do scoochie up here and I'm gonna make it a little smaller maybe like back to 100 it's already less and then I'm gonna bump the border up so I want this one to be definitely less subtle i um, also gonna change this fill I actually like this light pink color um, I want to turn off multiply go see it there we go there's a lot of just trial and error in this in this stage as you can see Playing with, oh, see, that looks kind of cool. Making it scarily big, that was kind of crazy. It's not what I want, but again, just some cool stuff you can do with this. I'm gonna turn it down, that looks good. Um, I'm gonna turn this opacity up to like 70. Cool, cool, border. I'm gonna bump up even more, 500, yes. I just want like a little bit of a highlight around here. Cool, there we go. So I'm gonna go in and do that on one of these leaves now. Okay, let's see. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna kinda make my own little shape that I know where I want that shadow to be. I think I'm gonna have it like, kinda like around here. Oh, it's beautiful, look at it. Okay, okay. And this, and again, a reason I like doing this is because I have so much control, anytime I can go in and like adjust the shape. Um, if I don't like it, I can change anything about it. Cool, so, ooh, and you know what I'm gonna do is grab the exact, here we go, effects that I use and throw it on here. Probably need to adjust a little bit, but a lot easier than starting from scratch. Oh wow, and look at that. Can't even see it. So let's see, I think I'm gonna turn down the blurriness because it's probably too blurry because it's a much so smaller shape. Um, border, let's go down to maybe like 200. Yeah, now we're starting to see it a little more. I'm gonna turn the blurriness down to like 20. <laughs> border, maybe like 100. All right, and here now I can Let's get this around. I'm gonna track mat that too, so we'll just see it on here. Nice. Mm, I like that. I kind of like this really dark right on the edge. Okay. Oh, let me rename this shadow. So I'm actually gonna do a duplicate shadow here. Um, I kind of want a one that's a little lighter and less obvious on more of the leaf, and then this one to more kind of be on the edge. So I'm just gonna duplicate. I'm just gonna call this like the shadow rim. And then this one's gonna be a bigger shadow. Scoot it up here. And I'm just gonna um, opacity to like 50. That looks cool. Scoot this up a little bit. So there's a, kind of just a lot more texture we're getting. And then one more, so much texture. Um, a really subtle highlight I want again. A nice highlight. Scoot this up here. That and I'm gonna use like a light pink. 
um, to kind of match the rest of the scene I used because I just really liked how that looked. So like that I think looks good. I don't to be too crazy. Maybe I'll blur it a little more up here, like 40. And the border gonna be like 150. Oh, can't see it. 110. I think I wanted to overlap it just a little bit more. A little too much. Border 120. 130. This is pretty much what I'm looking for. I might just adjust it a little bit so I don't have this kind of like middle area where I feel like there isn't much texture going on. Um, but it's definitely what I was looking for. Cool. So I'm going to go do this same thing to my other leaf. Now all of our shapes have the rough and edges as well as this fun little grainy texture. So looking pretty cool, looking pretty different, definitely a different feel already than what we had with that original super vector look. And next thing we're gonna do is add kind of an overall flickering kind of splatter texture. Uh, that's just gonna get thrown over our whole animation. And again, another tricky little way that something you could do in Photoshop with another like splatter brush or something, but a uh, way to do it in here so you can customize it a little bit more and kind of loop it how you want, stuff like that. So to do this, I wanna um, actually just start like a whole new comp. So command N for a new comp and I'm just gonna call this texture Oh one To start here, I'm gonna make a solid, just have it be pink. And what we're gonna use for this is an effect called fractal noise. Cool, so this looks pretty crazy. There's a lot that you can do with fractal noise, but there's some cool ways to make textures. So a lot of stuff going on over here. What we're mostly looking at, uh, contrast and brightness. So I'm just gonna crank these around and you can kind of see what it looks like. Let's crank this to a thousand. So getting that super black and white edges here, which is ultimately what we're gonna want. Brightness, as that goes up, Obviously, the brightness goes up, lose a lot of that, those black edges. And um, so I'm imagining that we just want like a bunch of small little of these black flickers. Um, and that's going to kind of be the base for our little animated texture. So I'm going to keep upping this contrast, just get it really strong. I'm going to go like 6,000. Now we have nice crisp edges between the white and the black. And the brightness, I'm gonna keep scooting, maybe like 1500. Cool, this is starting to get kind of what I'm imagining, these little flickers. Another part we're gonna look at is the scale. And I want it to be pretty small, cause again, I nice small little details. I'm gonna try 30. All right, it's starting to look nice. It might be a little too much right now. So make it a little brighter because that's going to key out some of that black. So maybe 2000. Okay. I'm also just going to quick go to my main cop and just kind of show what this is doing before we get here. Throw this on. That's texture. So obviously right now we cannot see it. So we just want to go into mode, multiply, and that'll knock out that white background. So this is black here, all probably just the color, but you're starting to get a feel of what it's gonna look like, some kind of old grainy quality we're getting. This isn't something that might work for everything. It might be a little bit too much texture, but again, we're just kind of exploring what we can do. Let's go back to that texture comp. So I think I like how this is looking. I might make it even like 2200, just so it's a little less, a little less obvious. I also don't want it to be fully black. Um, I'm gonna tint. And this is just gonna affect that black and I'm gonna make it, let's see, like a, kind of a, so this is gonna be like a darker texture. I think I'm gonna do a darker one and a lighter one on top of each other. So I think this is gonna be like a dark pink kind of. Hmm, yeah, we'll do that for now. So another thing is right now this is just still and we want it to loop. So I'm gonna use the evolution keyframes here. And I don't necessarily want to see everything moving, animating. So I'm just going to use a few hold keyframes and it's just going to jump between different things. 
So our evolution, I'm gonna go forward like five frames. Let me scoot this down, we don't need all that. And I'm just gonna kind of put something random in here, like three, cool, totally different. Five more frames, let's put in like eight. One, two, three, four, five, 12. And then, so I'm just gonna end here to kind of see what that's gonna look like looped. A little crazy. Hold frame, so highlight, toggle, hold frame, there we go. So imagining this kind of over our animation it could look pretty cool. Okay. So now let's kind of look at on here. I think it's too bright. So I'm gonna change this opacity to like 50. Mm, that's looking pretty good. Um, one thing I wanna make sure I do is loop it. Time, enable time remapping. Put a keyframe, that's right where my animation ends. Go delete the keyframe at the end using that arrow. Back to this one. Option click the stopwatch to add an expression. Super easy, just loop out, click out, and we should be looping. Cool, I think that's looking pretty good. So I think I also wanna add another layer of this texture, uh, just a bit lighter. So I'll have a darker one and a light one just to add a little variety. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go to my comps and duplicate this comp, um, which I just named dark texture. And this one's just gonna be light texture Go in here. Uh, so really just what I need to change is the tint. So I'm like kind of a, like a light peachy color, I think. Cool, that looks nice. All right, and back to my main comp. So right now, if I just duplicate the dark texture I have here and then replace it by holding Alt Option. This way I don't have to redo the looping. Um, but I do just wanna scoot it around a little bit so it's not exactly the same spot as my other one. There we go. So we can really see both and they're not just overlapping each other. And I'm gonna play that. I like it, it's definitely a lot. Uh, I might adjust it a tiny bit. I'd maybe play with the opacity um, to make it not so obvious, but it's definitely getting the effect that I want. Here I added that extra texture and everything we did with plant one to the second plant and finished out that flickering texture and it's looking pretty good. So there's just a few final little tweaks um, that I'm gonna add. And the first one is gonna be posterized time. So this is another one of my favorite tricks. I put on almost everything. So we're gonna grab an adjustment layer. I'm gonna name it posterized time. And we're gonna go up to effects and find posterized time. Cool, so this is another really straightforward effect. It's just gonna change the frame rate that we're viewing everything in. Really helps make something that you know, could seem a little more hand-drawn, especially, you know, generally frame by frame work is done at 12 frames per second. So I like to go with 12 frames per second and just kind of watch, see how that looks like. It It's gonna add a little bit of like a kind of stuttery effect and just start looking really cool. Awesome, really adds a lot. So you can play around with this. You can go lower if you want. You could try like eight, um, that's gonna be really low because there is, some quicker animation in here. I'm gonna keep it 12 so we don't like super jump around and miss anything big. Uh, but I think that really adds so much, such a good feeling to your work. Um, between that and rough and edges, those are two things I put on pretty much every single thing I do. One more thing you could do, I'm gonna duplicate this, is just add even more noise. Turn that off. Noise. Maybe something low like five. Um, you might barely even be able to tell if you cranked it up to like 20, you'll see that. Um, probably not color noise for me, but yeah, that's another just really subtle thing to kind of throw over your whole comp just to kind of polish it up and make it look nice.
And that's it. We've added a nice hand-drawn quality to our animation without needing to leave After Effects at all. There are so many different ways to use these little effects and tricks in your artwork to create brand new looks. The best way to keep learning is to just get into After Effects and start creating.